Hello, in this video, I'm going to be talking about the chemotherapy drug Paclitaxel. Before I go on, I'd love to invite you to subscribe to our channel and also go to yerba.com to get your personalized yerba report. Paclitaxel, the brand name of which is Taxol, is a chemotherapy drug that we started developing in 1990. At that time, people had to be admitted to the hospital for several days because we didn't know how to prevent a rare but serious side effect. We use Paclitaxel in the treatment of many cancers, including breast cancer. This is an interesting drug. It comes from the, part, the bark of the Pacific yew tree. So this drug was discovered when the government was trying to identify many, many new drugs that could work, and this one was a hit. The way it works is it stops cancer cells from dividing. You might remember from your biology class that after cells of any sort replicate their DNA, they slide over one another to separate. The way this drug works is it won't let the cells slide, and so they can't divide. And when cancer cells can't divide, they can't cause trouble. So it's an interesting drug. It doesn't interfere with DNA itself. Rather, it stabilizes these abnormal microtubules. So instead of sliding, they get stuck. We use this in the treatment of breast cancer in several situations. We can use it before chemotherapy, before surgery, I mean, to shrink a tumor, and that can allow for a more favorable surgery outcome, like a smaller tumor or more easy to remove lymph nodes. We can give it after surgery. It's often given with another drug called trastuzumab or Herceptin for HER2 positive breast cancer, and often given after other chemotherapy like doxorubicin and cyclophosphamide, which you might know as AC chemotherapy. We can also give it in people with advanced or metastatic breast cancer, and then it's usually given as the only chemotherapy agent along with targeted therapy, if that's appropriate, or just on its own. There's several different ways we give it. It's always given by vein. We always give it through an intravenous uh, line in your arm or if you have one, a port. And it's given over the course of, depending on the dose, either half an hour or an hour, or as long as three hours. Again, it depends on the dose. If you're interested in knowing what your options are for Paclitaxel, or if it will be part of your treatment plan at all, you can go to yerba.com and get your personalized Yerba report. How often we give it depends on the dose and for what reason you're getting it. It originally was given every three weeks, just like the AC chemotherapy used to be given every three weeks. And then as we discovered that giving chemotherapy at the same dose but more often was tolerable and perhaps more effective, we started giving a full dose every two weeks. And we've also investigate, investigated giving it weekly. And people usually before, after chemotherapy would get it weekly for 12 treatments at a lower dose, or they could get it every three weeks in a row, then a week off and every three weeks in a row and then one week off. In people with advanced cancer, we can give the every three weeks, the every two weeks or the every week. Of course, in people with advanced cancer, the bone marrow may not be able to keep up and so sometimes we have to give it less often or lower the dose a little bit. So there's a lot of flexibility in how to give this medication. Giving it every week at a lower dose gives you the same number of milligrams total, close enough that it's just as effective, and it can have fewer side effects. So it can be less fatiguing, it can be less suppressive of your bone marrow. If you get it every week, you don't need growth factor shots, and that's a real advantage to many people. What are the side effects of paclitaxel? Well, if you've had paclitaxel, you probably know that the thing we talk about the most is numbness or tingling in your fingertips or in your toes, and this tends to start with the very tips, and then it can move up. If paclitaxel numbness and tingling interferes with your ability to do things like pick a coin up off a desk without sliding it to the edge, 
or buttoning your buttons or uh, anything that interferes with your daily life, we will hold the medication, not give you that treatment and wait till that gets better before we give you the next dose. If you're interested in learning more about peripheral neuropathy, check out our separate video about peripheral neuropathy, which in the case of breast cancer does most often occur because of paclitaxel or its cousin docetaxel, the brand name of which is Taxotere. Another side effect it can cause is diarrhea in some people, and that can of course be very troublesome. If you get diarrhea, make sure that you call your medical team and they can help you get through that. It's really important not to wait till you're really sick. It can also cause hair loss. If this is the first chemotherapy you're getting and you're getting it weekly, it takes a long time for your hair to start falling out and to fall all the way out. If you're getting it every three weeks or every two weeks and it's the first chemotherapy you're getting, that will happen more quickly. You could check out our video about hair loss. This is the interesting thing. If you're getting it after another chemotherapy, and especially if you're getting it weekly, your hair might start to grow back. It doesn't mean the chemo is not working. It's just less intensive for the hair follicles than, for example, AC can be. But hair thinning or loss, diarrhea, neuropathy, numbness and tingling, and if we keep treating you without a change, that can become permanent. So that's why I'm being pretty insistent that you tell your team if you're having problems performing activities of daily living or if it's troublesome to you. Nausea is really uncommon with paclitaxel. It's very rare, but it's on the list of side effects. So we need to let you know about it. And then the other thing is associated not so much with symptoms, but with things your medical team will check for. And that's lowering of your counts, especially your white blood cell count. It's much less likely to do it than AC or other chemotherapy, for example, but it can happen, especially if you've already had other chemotherapy. It just sort of builds up and your bone marrow gets a little tired. Your white cell counts will rebound when you're done with treatment most of the time. Paclitaxel can cause anemia, though it's much less common, and it's very uncommon on its own to cause a problem with low platelet count. Some people get a skin rash, and if you've had radiation therapy to part of your body before, paclitaxel and docetaxel, its cousin, can cause something called radiation recall. So let's say you got radiated on your chest wall, and now you're getting chemotherapy again, it, you will see the area that got radiated light up. It will get red in exactly the lines where you had radiation. We can also see this on the back in people who had radiation to the breast, or if you had radiation to a spine before, and now you're getting paclitaxel, you can get redness in the area of the spine. It's an interesting side effect that a lot of people are unprepared for. I've covered a lot in this video. I hope it's been helpful. Before I leave, I do just want to say that we are really good at managing a rare but serious side effect, which is an acute allergic reaction, not to Taxol, but the stuff that it's mixed in to make it water soluble. If that happens, it happens right while you're getting treated and the people around you know exactly what to do. I hope this has been helpful. Drop a comment or question below. We try to get back to you within a couple weeks. Please be kind. Uh, we're human too. And thank you for watching.